Hello everybody, this is Dr. Cole. It's Sunday afternoon, August 28th, and we're now entering week two of Constitutional Law, Political Science 3753, for the fall 2022 term. Okay, everybody, we have a discussion that is going to continue through Monday midnight. Many of you will not see this message until Monday. You have until midnight to contribute to the discussion, to post to the discussion. Then we have a quiz coming up Wednesday, August 31st. Now, we, now, looking at our syllabus, we had a set of introductory notes last week, introducing the subject matter. Among the things we mentioned, something that students may be aware of, the, the Supreme Court, the political system as a whole, has kind of been roiled by the addition of the three justices that were nominated to the court by Donald Trump. Uh, Neil Gorsuch, Brent Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett. Okay. In the most recent term, they took constitutional law in some new directions with some of the uh, decisions that they've handed down, which are quite controversial, especially uh, the Dobbs case involving abortion, reversing the 1973 decision in Roe versus Wade. Okay. Um, what we have on the syllabus for this week is judicial review. Judicial review is what a constitutional court does when it considers whether a law or an action of a government official is constitutional or not. Okay, and that happened in both Roe versus Wade and the Dobbs case from just a few weeks ago. Okay, in 1973, the court said that restrictive abortion laws were unconstitutional. And now, just a few weeks ago in the Dobbs case, the court reverses that decision and says no such laws really are constitutional after all. Okay, so different justices at different times in history saw that question differently. And of course they were influenced, uh, influencing that or the, the political views of the presidents who appointed those justices to the court at different times. Now, the thing about judicial review is judicial review you will find is controversial. Uh, We've always had it in our system, as long as anybody can remember, and uh, we sort of think of it, I suppose, as unexceptional. If you have a constitution, the constitution is supposed to trump everything else, including any other body of law. Okay, so if there's a conflict, the constitution is supposed to prevail, and so it may be necessary for the court, the Supreme Court, to declare a law unconstitutional. But there are countries who have Supreme Courts, but who do not provide for judicial review. Okay. Judicial review, of course, always raises hackles because it involves unelected judges overruling decisions that were made about the law by elected members of the legislature very often. So as you look through those class notes for lecture notes for, for uh, class notes for lectures two and three on judicial review, you may be surprised about the extent to which judicial review is controversial. Okay. We, look at th we look through how judicial review developed, the first cases in which judicial review was exercised, and we look at controversies over judicial review up until the present day. Okay, and that's what we do in the class notes for lectures two and three. Okay. All right, now for the discussion, we gave you two pieces to look at that were published in the media in the immediate aftermath of the Dobbs Supreme Court decision. Now, your, your notes for lecture one discussed different ways in which the Constitution can be interpreted, most particularly the point of view called originalism or original intent, which has been advocated in recent decades, especially by conservatives. So you have pro and con articles to read about that. Okay, now, one of the articles is from the Wall Street Journal, the Wall Street Journal has a paywall, but you were sent instructions on how to access material from the Wall Street Journal through the OPSU library's institutional subscription. So follow the instructions there, and you should be able to access that article for our discussion if you have not done so already. Okay. For the quiz, we have three things we're asking you to look at. Okay. The case of Ex parte McCardle from period uh, right around or just after, I believe, the Civil War that only takes up only takes up a couple of pages in your textbook, the decision itself and the discussion in your textbook. Okay. 
Then there's the case of Baker versus Carr, which has been uploaded to the course website in the modules area. You should be able to you'll see a link that says Baker versus Carr. And I'll bring up a PDF of some uh, excerpts from the decisions, the opinions that were issued in Baker versus Carr. These actually come from an earlier two-volume edition of your textbook. It's not in the current one-volume version of the textbook that you have, but it's worth looking at anyway. So I have scanned the PDF and put it up on the course website for you to look at. Finally, you have another article from the press from the Conversation website discussing different approaches that Supreme Court justices take to interpreting the Constitution. Okay. Uh, not all of them who consider themselves conservative in one way or another agree completely with each other about how the Constitution is to be interpreted. And you'll find that discussed in that article, which is written by a law professor at the University of Southern California, I believe, from the website The Conversation. So take a look at that. Expect three or four, two false questions about each of those in your quiz that you will take on Wednesday the 31st. You can take it any time, 24 hours on the 31st. You'll have 15 minutes to answer the 10 true false questions once you begin. Okay. Now everybody, this material for the quiz, it touches on material we're going to look at next week in the class notes for lectures four and five. Uh, lecture four, efforts to curb the court, efforts that have been made in various ways to put limitations on the court or to push back on the, against the court. And then lecture five, threshold requirements, requirements that a case must meet in order for the Supreme Court to accept it. These are issues that come up in the quiz material. You may wish to look at some of that material, at least glance at it. Strictly speaking, though, all you're responsible for for the quiz are the two cases, Ex parte McCardle and Baker versus Carr, and the one article we've asked you to look at from the website, theconversation.com, I believe it is. Let's see, that's right theconversation.com. The link to that is in the announcement that was sent out for the quiz. All right, so we'll take the quiz on Wednesday after we finish the discussion up tomorrow, Monday. Okay, then for the rest of the week, we have judicial review, the class notes for lectures two and three. Uh, we will assign another discussion, another quiz. Once this quiz and discussion are over, we'll probably have about a, a hiatus of a week or two before we do that. And next week we'll be moving on to the class notes for lectures four, five, four and five, which we'll talk to you in greater detail about a week from now at this time. So I hope you will take part in the discussion and you will do well on the quiz on Wednesday. And we'll be talking to you once again in about a week's time.